Spiritual Teaching 258 1. You present yourselves fearful before me, O people, because my voice of justice makes you tremble, but I ask you, is it perhaps to my justice or to an injustice that you fear? If it is to my justice, know that you must agree to receive the divine judgment of your works. If it is an injustice, you are mistaken because I could not commit it. 2. You have for your judge the most inexorable, but at the same time the sweetest, patient and understanding father. A judge who instead of publishing your faults or giving you away in front of your fellow men, calls you alone, speaks to your heart, tests you as necessary and gives you a new opportunity, either to complete a work or to repair a fault. 3. If the Father's greatest love did not exist in divine justice, if His justice did not have that principle, this would no longer exist, humanity, its sin and its incessant offenses would have destroyed divine patience. But it has not been that way. Humanity continues to live, spirits continue to reincarnate, and at each step, in each human work, my justice is manifested which is infinite love and charity. For to understand the lesson I am talking about, men would need to delve into the essence of my lesson and for now they are given over to their earthly concerns and ambitions. But the time is coming when they leave for a moment what worries and enslaves them so much, to raise their gaze to the sky and ask inwardly, My God, what is it that happens in the world? What has become of our life and what have we done with it that we did not realize? That will be the moment of enlightenment that many will have. 5. Others will be surprised by the word that I have brought you at this time, the one that will reach the hearts of my emissaries, of my witnesses and disciples which are you. 6. Men will try to deny the truth to my revelation, but the facts, the proofs, the events will be giving voices and testimony of the truth that will arrive on the lips of my people, like the great message of the Third Era, and also by means of writing my doctrine will spread throughout the world, because it is a legal medium that from the earliest times inspired my envoys. I just want you to be jealous of my truth and take it to hearts in the cleanest and simplest way. 7. Disciples, see how the Master, being close to making his word cease, in each lesson gives you a lesson of spiritual preparation for your fight. 8. In caravans you come to receive my teaching after you have traveled a vast desert of vicissitudes. Your spirit has felt the arrival of the time announced for my new coming. He has heard the divine voice that calls you. 9. Caravans of the sick, the hungry, the thirsty and weary who come in search of the bread of love, of the manna of life, encouraged by the light of hope, are reaching the presence of their Creator. 10. Welcome you all. Rest under the shadow of my peace, eat and drink and heal yourselves from your ills. 11. If you know how to be constant listening to this word, when you get up to continue in the struggle of life, you will feel your burden is lighter because you have become strong in faith and knowledge. 12. Those who come seeking in me only goods or riches of the world and do not accept the existence of spiritual gifts, they will suffer disappointment, and when they turn away from the path to which they were called, they will look at their empty hands and desolate heart. They are spirits that still love the impure and I will have to give them one more time to evolve, collect experiences and when you return to my path, you are better disposed to receive me. 13. For those who have come with spirituality, my presence through this word is a true feast of light, where the best delicacies of the spiritual realm are offered to the need of those hungry for love, justice, wisdom, and peace. They will not be able to stray from my path and will know how to receive the world's goods in addition. 14. My work will be the essential thing in your life and the material will be the complement to survive and fulfill the mission that you have been trusted. 15. Ah, if you all understood that the sun of this word will soon set, you would hasten to save some of its courage and his light in your heart. But you are slow to understand, you are reluctant to develop the gift of clairvoyance, so that you could contemplate from now on the proximity of the new time. 16. Certainly, my stay among you will be short, under the form in which you have had me and it is necessary that you live the present and future, forgetting many customs, beliefs, ideas and practices of your past, which are part of the enormous bundle that you came dragging when you came to hear my word for the first time. 17. 
I am the savior of the spirits. I am the defender of your faith and your life. I could not leave you sunk in the abyss or lost in the deserts without making you hear my consoling voice, without making you contemplate the true light that arises from my spirit. 18. Do you want to settle for just listening to me to give peace to your heart, without preparing to sow my work in the heart of your brothers? Or do you want to be my disciples? 19. If you wish to please me by being useful to your fellow men, participate in them and take advantage of the divine teachings that every time I introduce myself, I give you, so that you remain fit to speak about me, my law and my doctrine and not be surprised by those who live preparing to fight any new light that arises, even if that light is the most absolute truth, the wisdom of all time. 20. Understand that I did not call you only to comfort you in your afflictions, but also to teach you to feel the pain of your brothers and to console them in their bitterness. 21. If you want to know what you have to do among humanity, just look at what I have done with you since the day that for the first time you heard my word. 22. I forgave you, I received you with infinite love and charity, I made you rest from the arduous day, I did not stop to judge your condition, your sphere or class, I cleansed the leprosy of your sin and healed your ailments. I was understanding indulgent and benevolent in judging your defects, I restored you to true life, giving you a doctrine of love that enables to save you, saving your fellow men. 23. There, in my works that I have had for each one of you, you will be able to find the best of the examples so that you carry out among those in need of body and spirit, who will also come to you in caravans. 24. Speaking to this people, I speak to humanity. It is your turn to approach the hearts of men tomorrow and fraternally transmit my word to you, which will consummate the work of redemption. 25. Today you feel that pain has touched you and sometimes you do not understand that by means of that chalice you are purifying yourself. How could you talk about me being stained? How could the love manifested through the feelings of charity and humility if he were full of selfishness? 26. The imperfections of the children of God have made pain exist, pain that has become a teacher to forge your heart and show you the path you lost. My love rests in your heart to remove all evil from him, because I want to see you strong, healthy, and clean. 27. Hear this voice that vibrates among you in this form. Do not tire of listening to it. I have prolonged my manifestation in order to polish the rough edges of your heart. And when I stopped manifesting myself in 1950, to be able to leave you firm in this faith. 28. Humanity is given to its science, its heart and mind are completely given to the life that they live on earth. That is why I chose among men these for whom I speak simple and without science. I touched those hearts and then I penetrated. Through my light into their understandings to deliver this message of love to my people. 29. This light has come to illuminate the path of your life and that is why you have given yourselves to me. After my departure I will leave you among humanity so that you bear witness to my truth and among the disciples, the teachers will emerge who preach with his works the doctrine of spiritual love. 30. The delights of the kingdom are for all. Here on earth you will have a bit of that peace and a reflection of eternal life. Be of good will on earth and you will not lack my peace. 31. You have seen many pages of the Book of Life go by since I gave you my word. Each one of them has been a perfect lesson. Sometimes it has been the love of the Father who has spoken to you. Other times it has been the Master who has sat you before his lesson. And sometimes it has been the Judge who has touched you. 32. All of you have received my word. Then all of you have received in spirit orders and missions to fulfill. Some have started. Others are waiting for the moment to get up. Others are in preparation. There is not one of you who has not received faculties to develop. And while some have begun their development since now when I still communicate in this way, others will begin their spiritual unfolding after the time of my communication. But in those times, all rise up as one spirit. 33. You have gifts to analyze my word, to receive my inspirations as well as the insights that will announce what is coming. 34. Those who have parked today, those who received gifts to receive my divine ray or let it be through them communicated the spirit world and they did not fulfill their mission, they will get up later to fulfill, although I tell you from now on, that will have to change the way of delivering. 
so that they do not confuse humanity. 35. The day will come when you are scattered throughout the world, one in a nation, another in other lands, and yet you will feel united by the spiritual harmony that I have brought you. 36. I am preparing you to love each other and with that bond you will be strong and invincible, for that I have been the loving master and constant that comes with his examples to show the way to the disciples. Watch your steps, by your works and even by your words and thoughts. Other than the man whoever judges your imperfections, may it always be the master who corrects you through your consciousness. 37. I wanted to communicate through sinful beings to show you my strength and my love. Now go to your father by means of the spirit to prove to him that you also love him. Seek that goal, reach that sublime communication of spirit to spirit without conforming to the first fruits you gather until you have reached perfection. Each man will then carry within him the divine guide who will guide him eternally along the paths destined for those who know how to rise in search of the love of their creator. 38. My light made word, life, tests, everything has come to strip you of your materiality. Tomorrow the same human science will have spirituality, elevation, noble ideals, and will be able to speak of what has apparently been hidden and that in reality he has not discovered, because it will not be the mind that penetrates the arcanum but the spirit, and that will occur when you have achieved clarity. Do not fear, people, that by attending to the spirit and what corresponds to it, human life and your material duties are abandoned, or that your health and your body suffer consequences that you do not see today, because when the spirit of this humanity rises from the scum in which it lives today, it will feel in its matter a force and a light unknown that will lead you to create an existence lavish in well-being, prosperity and health. 39. How have men tried to feed their spirit eternally, with passing practices and sometimes frivolous? Neither the spirit, nor even the heart should you deceive it with worship that has no essence or substance of truth. 40. It is necessary that this light soon reach the heart of humanity, no matter that at the beginning it is the source of disputes or fighting. Light and darkness have always collided, truth and false, good and evil. As well as the shadows of the night they dissipate before the light of day. Thus the wickedness of men will be separated before my message of love. 41. In that second era, my coming as a man was only believed by a few hearts, however, humanity later took the birth of the Savior as the beginning of a new age. So in this time, the beginning of my communication with you, that is, my advent as Holy Spirit, will be taken tomorrow as the beginning of another era. 42. Listen to what Christ, the manifestation of divine love, tells you. 43. Peace to men of good will, to those who love the truth and sow the seed of love. 44. I am the word who comes to look for men, because they have not been able to reach me. It is my truth that I come to reveal to you, since the truth is the kingdom to which I want that you all penetrate. 45. How to find the truth? Did I not tell you before that many renunciations are required? 46. Sometimes, in order to find the truth, you have to give up everything you have. Give up even yourself. 47. The vain, the materialist, the indolent, cannot know the truth until they destroy the walls of which he lives within. It is necessary for him to overcome his passions and weaknesses in order to face my light. 48. A materialist only loves human life, but recognizing that everything in it is fleeting, tries to live it intensely. When your plans or ambitions are not realized, or pain somehow surprises you, then he despairs, blasphemes and challenges fate, blaming it for not receiving the gifts to which he believes he is entitled. 49. They are weak spirits in reluctant matters, they are morally small beings, who are tested in many forms, to make them understand the value that they attribute in their materiality to works of little merit. 50. How the materialized would like to modify their destiny. They want everything to be done according to their idea and their will. 51. You can get from God all that is good that you want, without the need to challenge His justice or to challenge His power. My love is ready to attend to anyone who wishes to improve their existence. 52. I tell you again, peace to men of good will who love the truth, 
because they do something to bend to the divine will and those who take refuge under my protection, necessarily have to feel my presence both in his spirit, as in his human life, in his struggles, in his needs, in his trials. 53. Men of good will our children obedient to the law of their father. They walk the straight path and when they suffer intensely, they lift their spirits up to my spirit, asking for forgiveness and peace. They know that pain is often necessary and that is why they rush it with patience. Only when it becomes irresistible, they beg the weight of their cross to be relieved. Lord, they tell me, I know that my spirit needs to purify itself, to suffer, to rise. You know better than I how much I need. You cannot give me anything that I do not need, your will in me. Blessed are those who think and pray in this way, because they are looking at the example of his master to apply to the trials of his life. 54. It is true that each pain, each suffering renews the heart, shakes the spirit and cleanses it from its spots, giving it a chance to grow and rise. 55. How much good does pain do in the spirit, when that cup is drunk with love and patience? 56. Long has been the road to test your spirit. You are like the ancient trees that release their dry leaves in contact with the winds that whip and strip them, to later cover themselves with new leaves. Thus the tree fulfills the will of the Father. So you should all comply leaving the tests and lessons that your Father gives you through life. They will strip you of old clothes, impurities and rags of the Spirit, to emerge dressed in new finery. 57. No, disciples, that pain removes bad fruits from your heart. It gives you experience making your mistakes turn into successes. 58. This is how I test you so that the light may be made in your understanding. But when you do not understand and suffer for not finding the meaning of my wise lessons, your pain is useless and you waste the lesson. 59. During this time, I have come to explain to you the meaning of life, in which you will know the reason for pain, what atonement and restitution means and why you need to purify yourselves. When my people understand and feel my teaching, the foundations of a new humanity will be laid. 60. Has pain ever shaken you? Have your branches creaked? Have dry leaves come off and have bad fruits fallen from your tree? I tell you that the good that your spirit has acquired, I cannot compare that with anything from the world, even all. 61. I give you examples that in nature you see every day, like the tree when it is hit by the gale. Because material nature is a manifestation of divine nature, therefore, in all that surrounds you in this life, you can find a lesson or a revelation for your spirit. 62. Just as your body to live seeks the air, the sun, the water and the bread, the spirit also needs the environment, light and sustenance proper to his being. When deprived of the freedom to rise in search of what feeds him, becomes weak, withers, dulls, as if a child were forced to remain forever in his crib and locked in his bedroom. His limbs would become paralyzed, he would pale, his senses would fade, and they would atrophy their powers. 63. See how the spirit can also be a paralytic. I tell you, the world is full of paralyzed people, blind, deaf, and spiritually ill. The spirit that lives locked up and without freedom to develop is a being that does not grow, neither in wisdom, nor in strength, nor in virtue. 64. Do not wait for the furious gales to cleanse you of impurities, because you can also wait for the arrival of the seasons to renew yourselves in them, to purify yourselves and flourish. 65. Much you will have to learn in this world so that you can reach other higher abodes. 66. Learn, meditate, know how to fight, suffer and wait. Always love and trust also. Be men of faith and goodwill, and you will be great spirits. 67. If you want to seek my presence within the nature in which you live, do it. I know that in everything you will have to find myself, because I find myself in each and every one of my works. 68. See how I communicate through these men in whom I hide for a moment to make his lips my divine word. When will you look at me beyond what belongs to this world? When will you listen through your spiritual senses without the need for a human apparatus? 69. The eternal lesson of God is always vibrating, because He is the Word, but only hears it directly or let the luminous beings be from spirit to spirit. 
70. When you come to be in close communion with the divine and with the human, when you reach the harmony of your being, you will hear the song in which the angel and man, heaven and the world, the hereafter and the universe, spirit and matter. Everything will come together in a hymn of love towards the divine being who has given life to his works, turning them into his children. In that hymn you will unite, disciples, because for this I have come again to men. 71. It is necessary that you enter your inner sanctuary, the one that was not built by the hand of man, but by the divine mind. I tell you that there you will know the revelation of the truth, there you will understand the essence of the eternal, so that you love it above all the fleeting. 72. What is your body, traveling birds, whose flight has a short duration, bird that without knowing sings his soon disappearance, poor body that asks a lot and wants a lot for itself in its egoism. On the other hand, the spirit is the invisible bird to the world, but white and luminous, which rises higher and higher as time goes by, it is the being for whom there are no ages, years, or centuries. 73. You know what day, what time, and what year you were born. But do you by any chance know when you arose spiritually to life? 74. Raise your spirit, that is the essence of your life, that is your destiny and the end for which you were created. Rise up, because that way you will come to me. I have much to give you, much more than you have found in the world. 75. Love will finally defeat you and by love you will know me. My peace be with you.